In this video session, we will talk about how you can create content at scale as a creator using AI. And we're going to basically unlock the power of AI. And I have with me uh, Julia McCoy from uh, Content at Scale. She's also the founder of Content Hacker, a really, really cool uh, website and community sharing all about AI tools and how you can create content. She's a multiple time author. I think she's written like eight books or something like that. And I'm sure AI plays a huge role in this. And she's tested like a bunch of tools. I was just browsing her YouTube channel before this session. I was just seeing like all the kind of content she's creating there as well and what she's done at, over at Content at Scale. So we have a really valuable presentation for you today where she's going to actually share the full process and we might share screen and, you know, demonstrate a few things as well here. So Julia, warm welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Nabi. This is awesome. I love what you're putting together. Glad to be a part of it. Yeah. And we discussed a little bit before, we're going to actually have a special deal. So we, uh, for content at scale, uh, so you can get 20% in free credits. That's not available yeah. anywhere else. So you Nowhere can go else? to anywhere during this session or you can be, you can see it like content at scale dot AI slash Navid and you can get huh? this deal. And yeah, if you have any questions and stuff like that, you can drop the, drop it in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you're interested for more videos like this, we might do something special in the future as well. So with that being said, mm -hmm. Yulia, why don't we get into it and, you know, share, share this valuable presentation and, you know, I might have some questions as we go along. I, you even mentioned you changed a few things right before here to make it, yeah, you know, really, really up to date for this creator audience on, on this, you know, session. Yes, correct. Last night, I was actually updating it. It was funny because I just got an executive assistant, which has been amazing. But I didn't realize this was 9am till the night before. So I kid you not, I was up at I was up at nine until 1030 reworking yep. the slides because so much has changed. You know, it changes day to day sometimes. And I feel like a new tool is popping up all the time. And I mean, I I was just talking to my partner in this project, Jan. We were like, you know, we'll, let's see how what tools are going to actually be around. But I think I there are that. certain tools that have higher quality, and I would consider Content at Scale one of these tools. And you're going to probably see a lot how, how this can help you with your SEO efforts and actually creating this long form content. Because I am a big proponent of creating really good content. I think you are yes. with the same, you know, mantra here. Like you're not just like AI, like it, it shouldn't feel like AI generated because AI, no. what does it stand for? Artificial <laughs> intelligence. Artificial yes. uh -oh. is not real, right? So That's it's right. not going to be that human touch and you need that for the content. And Yulia is really good at doing this. So yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, well said. That's exactly what this is all about. Yeah, so let's just dive right in. And then anytime you have a question, Navi, jump in. We can do that. I think Absolutely. that'll make it really valuable for the audience. But yeah. I want to start here. This is a great little mindset shift um, because, you know, in my line of work, I deal with a lot of writers that are resistant to this. Literally, I was on a training class yesterday with a bunch of communicators that were in offices like Spectrum, Dell. They were in mass communication levels. And their question was... <laughs> Well, AI can't see, smell, or hear. I don't think it's a threat. Are you kidding me? No, it's going to change everything. And you'll see that in this talk. I've got some data that is going to blow your mind on the shift that I'm seeing working directly in this industry. So Gandhi said it best, the future depends on what we do in the present. And the present is incredible because of this revolution that is AI changing everything as we know it in content. So we got to take this opportunity and do something with it. That's how we're going to get ahead. So that's a great quote from a great person as we get started. This is really a new frontier. So you're in what is the first of the first times here. AI didn't explode until December, November of 2022. So we're in the first year still and the first years to come. That's pretty amazing. So I wanted to start here because this is a question I've had especially as I got started working in AI this year. Well, where did this thing come from? So it's a conglomerate of multiple technologies, but what it boils down to is AI really is a machine's ability to perform cognitive functions that we associate with the human mind. So reasoning, learning, interacting with your environment, all the way down to even getting creative at solutions. And what's happened is the algorithm capabilities and the data, which is 
data sets trained on detecting and predicting. So remember that, detecting and predicting. That's really important to understand how this works. The data points exploded in the past 12 months, going from 100 million, some odd, to over 100 billion. And there are AI founders, uh, professors that have been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years, and they didn't think this would happen until 50 more years. So we are in an incredible time where AI has just exploded as a technology. And to date, it's the world's fastest adapted technology. No other technology sphere has been adapted to this fast, which is crazy. So AI has been around. If you think of Siri and Alexa, that's actually built on AI. Google Translate is too, things like fraud detection. But what we're seeing is with ChatGPT and LLM specifically, we're seeing a revolution because of how good those are. So the a little bit about my background so you can see where I'm coming from here. So since 2011, I've been writing, writing content. It's been my thing. I had a writing business where I had 100 writers. We did over 40,000 content projects. We were one of the first to build a human content service platform. And I really got to understand what makes up good content, like we were saying at the beginning of this, because that is what brings sales and ROI. So I didn't quickly adapt to AI. What I did do, though, because you got to be wise when you run a business, you got to think ahead, otherwise you lose. In 2021, I saw GPT on the horizon. And so I literally sold my writing agency when it was at the height and making incredible income. That was very hard to do. But I'm really glad I did it. And I'll tell you back then in 2021, when I sold it, I didn't actually think that AI was technically coming for my job. I really didn't think that at all. Even though I knew it was here and GPT was getting better and better at rapid speeds, you know, I tested article spinners over the years. None of them came close to what GPT-3 could do. But I was like, I really don't think it's going to replace the human writer. And that's why when ChatGPT exploded and came out, I was actually resistant. And I was on stage at Digital Marketer saying this uh, one month after ChatGPT came out. And it's funny because I was the lead speaker at this event. I had five people behind me and all of them were saying it's time to adapt to AI. <laughs> it's Julia, the opening speaker, saying AI is garbage. So I completely changed my tune a month later. Didn't say this, but something like it. Goodbye, human writers. Whenever I found the technology, because I live in the real world. If it doesn't work, if it doesn't save me time, if it doesn't actually make my job easier, I'm not going to use it. That simple. So I didn't find the AI technology even when ChatGPT came out. It was writing superficial content. It was very lackluster at best. It was writing garbage. <laughs> and so I wasn't even threatened by it at all. But what happened in January of 2023, I found content at scale. And we'll talk more about how it's built, which makes it very unique and capable of mimicking a true human writer, which blows my mind that we're there today. But before we go there, let's address some elephants in the room. These actually held me back for most of last year. These are big questions. And we were saying at the beginning of this, Naveed brought up that I was editing my slides last night because of this third question, will content even matter with AI coming to search? Well, that has shifted every single week. So I added some fresh insights right now <laughs> for this talk because that's an evolution that's happening every 24 hours, which is crazy. Google's AI in search. But these are the questions. I just wanted to come in here with one thing. I, I was speaking to Jan about this as well for like mid journey and tools like that. You don't actually own, like if you just create mm -hmm. the con like an image in mid journey, you actually don't own the copyright to that image. Correct. But if you customize it after, maybe add your branding and stuff like that, then you have the copyright. So it's kind of interesting, like how this is evolving. I think a lot of legislation is coming as well and what is ethical and what is not ethical. And that's why it's maybe difficult, you know, and as you're going to see, you probably can personalize a lot of the content you create because you need to add your personal touches because Google has been really good for such a long time to just wipe the internet of bad content. And like, if you search for something, you, you yeah. typically find like a Brian Dean blog post that's probably human written, right? Or like, you know, it's... <laughs> 
is really good. Like if you search for something around SEO or Neil Patel or something like that, you'll find these kind of blog posts on the first page in something around marketing or any other topic. So it's usually not garbage that is on the first page. So I think that's going to continue even in the new age of AI, although you can ha get help with the, an AI like content at scale to do it faster, but you have to follow some of the strategies we're going to share here today. I think that's, that at least, that is what I'm, uh, my approach at least to the, this whole thing. Yes, definitely. Well, I completely agree. And I have some data to back these things up. So Great. <laughs> let's dive right in. I love that. So yeah. do you own the copyright? Like you were saying, you know, that's a big question. And for me in the content world, the tech side of this, I didn't. I didn't actually own the copyright last year because there was no clear legislator. So as of this year, 2023, the U.S. Copyright Office actually added some legislator, but only for the written side of this. There is none yet for the image generation. That is like a Wild West territory. People are being sued. Other people mm -hmm. are suing those people. You know, Mid Journey got sued, but sadly the artist lost. <laughs> I yeah. think it's a losing battle if you're going to sue a giant like that. But when it comes to text, this is what we actually have. So the U.S. Copyright Office says this, if a work was created by an AI system, then the copyright is owned by the person who owns the AI system. So it's the creator of the AI that has the rights, which means that creator can actually pass those down to us or not. And that's the question we have to ask, especially for writing content that we want to commercialize. That's long form content. That's your books, content that's going to build your authority. You want to own the copyright. And as a writer, like this was really important to me. So if you ask ChatGPT, which is OpenAI's tool, what does it say about this? <laughs> it says the final decision should be left to the courts. And I've been following what OpenAI has been publishing. So they have a terms of service that's open to the public that talks about this. So there's a section called Your Content that they added this September 2023, where they said that we assign to you all of the right title and interest to the output. You can use content for any purpose, including commercial purposes, such as sale or publication, if you comply with the terms. That sounds good. But then we scroll down and we see something called similarity of content. And here is where it gets tricky. So OpenAI says that when users ask similar questions, which is the prompt, and they're getting the same answer as you, which is the generation, then that similar answer you don't own. That's not considered your content. <laughs> that eradicates like 80% of what ChatGPT writes because it's just predicting and detecting. It's not actually originating. So it's not original content. And this is something you really have to consider. And this is why, like we were saying, Constant Scale was one of the tools I adapted to because of this. So if we know the U.S. Copyright Office said that, then we know, okay, these tools have the right to pass this down to us, but are they? And we just saw what OpenAI said. Not really, not really clear that they do. A <laughs> little bit gray there. But here's what Constant Scale does. And I really encourage you to read, look for code of ethics, ask for it from these tools. Some of them haven't developed it yet. Some of them are in the middle of getting this done, hiring an ethicist. This is all a wild west right now, but it's up to us as the users to really know what we're using. So in Content Scale's Code of Ethics, it talks about the intellectual property right and the copyright. So I quote from the Code of Ethics, we at Content Scale believe in empowering creators and thinkers as such any content generated using RAI is automatically owned by the user who commissioned the work. And then it goes on to say that Constant Scale relinquishes all copyrights, passing those rights entirely down to you. And there's no contradictory statement. Now, the reason Constant Scale can say this, and it's not BS, because anyone can publish anything, is because Constant Scale is, in fact, a proprietary stack of technology that was built over a year with a full-time development team. It's not just a blanket API call to ChatGPT, which a lot of AI tools sadly are. They go no deeper. So this one has a stack that writes content with three different LLMs. And the way it was built makes it a proprietary tool. So this holds up. This is actually something you can rely on, which is interesting. Naveed, any insights you have thinking about this? Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of these tools popping up and I see that they are pretty simple. It's pretty simple to build like even a no-code 
software, right? Which is great. <laughs> like maybe as a creator, that is a good way to actually offer something to your community. Maybe you have a course yeah. on summits and you can offer some different prompts and stuff like that or webinars like my friend John, uh, John Schumacher, also a speaker on the summit. He has this for webinars, right? But that's not the same as having like, you know, a proprietary software, as you're saying, this, this takes time. Like, I mean, there, there's a few out there, like, you know, I guess similar, but, but I think content at scale is, it has a very specific purpose, right? And yeah, like, I mean, you see, like writing long form content mostly is that's kind of what you guys focus on to yes. write content that ranks and uh, to do it at scale, which is in the name. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, it's good. really interesting though, like all these ethical mm -hmm. standpoints and that's changing all, I'm sure it's going to change a lot with, especially for images, I'm interested because I'm, I want to use that, but I think there's the workaround is to customize certain things. And I think that's the same, even if you're using stuff from ChatGPT, which I use a lot, uh, like you can, I mean, I, I might use it for an outline and then I don't use it for everything. I don't like write the entire blog post usually there, but. As you're going to show, you probably can do, how, 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 how much would you say you do with, with a software usually? Do you get it 80%, 90% done with, with an AI tool? Yeah, good question. Yeah, I would say it's around 80 right now, which okay. is pretty shocking because my content is very specific. Yeah. Also, I'll show you ha some hacks how we do yeah, that. Yeah, we'll show this as we go here. I mean, yes. we'll probably show some examples as well. So really interesting. Yeah, I'm saving about usually like a long form, 3,000 word, 5,000 word blog. Mm -hmm. That's an eight hour process for me. I'm saving seven of those eight hours. Cool. So, so yeah, it, yeah. And I spoke to like an A-list like copywriter as well. He he was ta telling me that you typically, you, even if you hire the best copywriter in the world to write your sales page, you still need to edit. So yep, if you don't want to do exactly. this yourself, you might hire an editor. And of course, a content editor for a blog post would be cheaper than a, copy editor maybe for a long form sales page, but still you can either do it yourself or hire someone for this kind of process. You still would have to edit something, whether that's with AI or you doing it yourself or you hire someone. So there's always some editing involved. Yes. And that baseline, just removing the barrier of that blank draft. But for me, it was even more than the blank draft. It was like, do I have functional baseline? Do I actually have like structured headers? Do I have original content? Because that's what I didn't have with ChatGPT. And so I had to rework all of it. And then I was like, well, forget that. Yeah. But with this, you actually have a functional baseline that does save hours of time. But you still have to edit it before it goes out. And I'll talk a little bit about that approach, too, because that's a good point. So this is the other question I've gotten a lot. Um, I've also asked myself this because we publish so much content to build traffic on our sites. Should we actually label this content as AI content? Is Google going to look for that label? Is that going to be important? So I wrote an article on this. I'm a columnist at Search Engine Land to label or not to label. And essentially what I found after researching is that Google doesn't care how you created the content. And I'll show you more about that, what Google actually says right now. They care that it serves the user. That's what they're all about in the end. So if your content, if you're going through a framework I call craft, where you're optimizing you're editing that content. I'll show you that in a second, what that looks like. Then your content's going to serve the user and it's created in a way that reflects you, your personal style, your personal experience, which is all critical to the rankings and conversions. So if we think about that, if content is going through AI, but we're crafting it to be great content, if we stick an AI label on it, well, Google doesn't need that label. So why would we do that? that could actually negatively impact the reader's experience. So labels could detract, don't even do them. However, this is different for video content. And I'll show you what TikTok is doing. But first, here's an idea that backs this up as well for the tech side. So whenever I had my writing agency, we had 100 writers at one point ghostwriting a lot of top-notch content for author bylines. Those human writers never got attributed. So I I think the same <clears throat> scenario is playing out here with AI where, you know, why would we attribute AI if that content is still going to be great content and go under our byline and we have somebody in place checking that content? So not necessary, don't have to do it. And if you're using the craft framework, this is something that I built um, a few months ago, January, February, 2023. I was like, you know what, all these poor writers, they need something to follow to know how to edit content. And now hundreds of writers are using this. 
And it's just a baseline that helps you understand what to do when you're looking at that first draft. You got to cut the fluff. AI is notorious for adding a lot of fluff to its content, although it's getting better. I'll tell you, I cut the fluff less than I ever have because of how good it's getting, especially with content at scale, which has a built-in editor and grammar checker. And then you want to review it, optimize it with keywords, make sure that's happening. Add images, bring it to life with visuals, GIFs, media, graphs. Fact check, AI detects and predicts. It doesn't research. So you always want to fact check what AI is generating and then trust build with your own story. That's what's really going to move the needle for that lead when they're like, well, I read this great piece of content, but why should I take the next step? Well, that's going to come down to your personal experience building up your authority. But when it comes to AI labeling, it's definitely different for video and social media. Um, In fact, TikTok just launched something called an AI-generated content label. They're trying to combat a lot of deep fakes, which is content, especially in video, where you don't actually know if that person's real or not. (laughs) And it was generated by AI. So that's pretty crazy. And it can even, you know, there's apps out there that can morph your lips and what you're saying. And it looks like you, but it sounds entirely different. So... This is a problem for video platforms in particular because it could get them in a lot of trouble. If somebody publishes, if an influencer, if their likeness gets swiped and then the content gets published where they are saying something unsafe to the general public, (laughs) that is going to fall back on that platform. So these platforms are definitely trying to mitigate the risk there, which is a good thing. So this is the biggest elephant in the room that I'm hearing more than any of the other questions right now. And this is the one I was sitting on changing again last night because this question is evolving as we speak. So Google has done quite a number with AI. Last year in 2022, in April, they were completely against it. They said, they were quoted, John Mueller actually said, if you use AI, you'll get penalized if you create content with AI. And then in October, people found entire websites ranking with AI generated content without a single bit of human editing. And they called Google out on Twitter. And that's when Danny Liaison, uh, Danny Sullivan, the liaison, stepped in and said, no, we never said that, which is not true. You did. And they did a complete backtrack. And now AI is actually in Google search. So this is a big question. Like, should we even worry about SEO if AI is changing how search works? So we got to take a step back and see the big picture to understand the answer here. So Google is a traffic monster. It brings in 80% of the world's online traffic, which is more than any other platform out there right now. Way more than the social media platforms. And 8 billion searches a day are happening in Google by real humans looking for answers to their questions. So don't forget that. That's the big picture here, There's, which means there's opportunity. But how are we going to grab that opportunity? Because it's going to look so different. So this May, Google launched SGE. That's their name for search generative experience, where AI is actually inside of search. So I'll tell you, this really matters to me. Just some context here, because every single site that I've built, every business I've built, it heavily depends on Google for traffic. It was 100% of my source of leads for seven years. And the businesses that I'm building now rely on organic traffic. So you can see Continent Scale, for example, we're building up our own website with content, as we should, or right? that's the brand name. So it's at over 600,000 uniques per month right now. This is fresh data. And that's Organic search from Google, the majority of that. And then Content Hacker is the same, nearing 10K a month. Haven't spent a lot of time on the site, but will be in the future where we're going to add more content. How long did it take? Because con- how, how long has Content at Scale been around? Because I, I remember, I don't know if we talked about this before, but like how, how long did it take you to actually get, this is incredible. I mean, this it's like, it hasn't been around that long, I think, the tool. No, so. you're right. Yes, that's a great question. Yeah, so it started September of 2022. So it just crossed a year old. That's crazy. I mean, that's insane. Like in in like one, 
Okay, you have how, how, and, and the team. What is it like? I mean, obviously, maybe for a solo creator, is a little difficult. You you have a, you know some things behind it, and you have knowledge as well to to be able to do things like that. But and, and also backlinks and stuff. I mean, there's many things that play a role, right? But uh, yeah. well, what is it like to to grow this? Well, how how yeah. what was the process? So it's keyword research. We're looking at like what keywords have high volume that we can rank for, and then we're creating content to target those keywords. And then once that content is out, we're optimizing that content and building links all day. And I'll tell so you, you have like, like, we have a team, team member devoted to, do that, to right? that. Yes. Yeah. So th exactly. that, is, that, that is the tricky part for a lot of people. I find it like you, you create this valuable content. And if it's not that much competition, you might rank for it just because of your domain mm -hmm. rating, like kind of, you know, how, how your site is indexed and different things, right? And, and the backlinks you already have. But then you need also backlinks to the individual blog posts, uh, like if you're writing about a specific topic, like the best uh, AI tools to, I mean, whatever, the best AI writer, so something like that. It's probably a lot of competition on this right now. So you will yes. probably need some uh, backlinks in order to rank for something like that if it's an affiliate blog post or whatever you're writing about. So yeah, Exactly. So, yeah, and it doesn't but, uh, take a big team. That's the beauty of this. Like the content yeah. team, we have two link builders that were part-time right. that are overseas. And they're working on links every single day. And then we have one writer that's able to do up to 80 to 100 pieces a month. And I'll share a little bit yeah, of the secret I'm, I'm sauce definitely there. Definitely interested that's to see how that works. Of AI. And that's crazy. That's that's incredible. Like, but, and the yeah. content is great quality, clearly, since you're getting this amount of traffic. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what it's the, it, like, because you might get a lot to your homepage as well, but is, is this mostly to your to your content or to the homepage of content at scale? The, the yeah, 600? this is... To our content. So it's hitting wow. a landing page. It's hitting blogs. This is hitting wow. our content rich pages. That's great. That's, that's incredible. All right. Let's, let's keep going. This is great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a money slide right there. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to break it down. So showcase yes. how this works. I mean, let's exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And something you said, you know, we, I'm not new to this, right? So I've been doing SEO content and what what was interesting to me, and I didn't know this actually when I started doing SEO content, but the traffic stream that we built to this website, my agency website, which I sold in 2021, it had over 20,000 keywords that it was ranking for whenever we sold it, which was insane. And 500 of those were in the top 10, if not, I think it was five to eight positions in Google. So the value of that domain ranking for that many keywords caused our business valuation to go way up. So if you're like thinking of an exit down the road, my goodness, <laughs> a domain built with content helps with that. So just yeah. a little hot tip there. So this is the question we asked earlier, right? How will AI generated content, how is this going to affect your website clicks? How is this going to impact what? shows up in Google when people type in keywords. So AI content on one hand, we're using it to create content. And then here's AI in search. <laughs> Google's trying to actually add a chat GPT like experience. So I'll tell you, I've studied this a lot this year, right? Because it's going to impact. I mean, we're looking at over half a million uniques per month on our site from Google. So this matters to us. So I watched the whole keynote that Google released back in May, the IO keynote where they showed the experience of what's coming. And they, sh they show this beautiful experience that, you know, much like Google does, doesn't actually match up to the products. <laughs> the marketing was very nice. The product's a little, hmm. So here's what's happening right now in Google's SGE. There's a lot of duplicate content. You'll see the same result twice, if not three times. I mean, this is going to make people want to just skip SGE entirely and go straight down to the proven SERPs. So this is making people frustrated. And I'm in so many circles where I hear this from SEOs and consumers, where it's just not a great experience. The other problem is this, and I'll tell you, this is making a lot of publishers really mad. And I saw it happen to my own content. So I was one of those mad publishers where when you type in a, a keyword, and the keyword for this was how to be a content marketing writer, SGE shows you a whole article and there's no attribution. Well, where did that article come from? Usually there's attribution. I could say nine times out of 10 in SGE, there is attribution. That's the good news. I don't think they're going to be doing this with the majority of searches. But what I did find whenever I was, and I did this search again last night, still happening, 
they swiped this article straight from my blog and there's no attribution. So this is the concern right now with SGE that we were not shown in that keynote. This was not a piece of it at all. In fact, Google kind of said the opposite. We're going to send people to websites. So this is something that's on my radar. We're keeping an eye on and we're going to see how deep this goes. But again, you know, I've ran hundreds of keyword searches and nine times out of 10, you do get attribution. And after talking to top SEOs about this, thinking through it, watching so many insights on YouTube, <laughs> looking at all the things, this is where I'm landing. Google really can't afford to do that long term because of how much money they make from publishers in SERPs. So this is like almost 60% of their entire income stream. $200 billion last year was made through ad revenue. What creates that ad revenue? Publishers like us putting out content that creates competition. That's what drives that CPC up. So Google can't afford to lose market share and not attribute. That I think this is going to go away. I think Google is going to attribute long term because of this. They can't afford not to. <laughs> That's a bad thing. But here's the opportunity that I see in the good part of this, which is nine times out of 10, there will be attribution and there will be opportunity for us to show up in SERPs. So yeah, even though I just showed you something pretty devastating where Google is swiping content, I still think there is a huge opportunity to actually maximize our content in SERPs with AI. And here's why. So I've done a million different searches. Uh, whether it was me doing the search myself or watching other people do hundreds of searches. And time and time again, I've seen that for keywords, like for example, where to go hike in Vermont or what to eat tonight or how to become a writer. The keywords that are all over the place in many different niches. What Google is going to do with SGE is serve more niche sites. And this was something that they said in the IO keynote. They made a big point to say where we want people to see other people. And I think big sites that are counting on a keyword bank, but they don't have topical authority for any one real topic are going to lose. Like they should probably pivot their marketing strategy now. And that's big sites like Forbes. But the sites that are in specific niches are going to win. So if you have a domain and it is niche specific, and it doesn't have to be like super niche specific, but as long as it's related to what you do, you can really win. And this is what Google was talking about whenever they showed this over and over. And what they were highlighting in their keynote here was creators. They were spotlighting creators, not the big publisher. They said people will always value the input of other people. And whenever they released SGE, they talked about it as a jumping off point where people can explore content and perspectives. And then they talked about showing links to resources, which we hope Google will get better at. <laughs> That's the only problem. Come on, Google, attribute the publisher. So how is Google going to find the right types of content to show at the top of Google? If we know that AI is here, it's going to impact how search works. And we know that people are using AI to create a ton of content. Well, there's, you know, there's an ocean here, a tsunami rather. And there's going to be a huge wave of AI content crap that's going to hit Google because, you know, hundreds of millions of people are now using ChatGPT. So how is Google going to actually sort through this content and rank it to show at the top of Google, to show the right niche sites? So last December, Google launched an extra E in their page ranking algorithm, which is EAT expertise, authority, uh, authoritativeness, and trust. So that extra E was all about experience. And it's interesting because if you think about experience, human experience in particular, it's the thing that the robots don't have. They can't tell you how that pizza tastes. They can't tell you what skydiving felt like. They can try, but they're not going to get close to what a human can tell you. So it's interesting Google added that last December. I think it was a way for them to get ahead of this onslaught of robotic content that's going to hit search. You know, there's AI detectors out there. Content of Scale has one of the top five that tell you, oh, this sounds very robotic. Like if you're not using an AI detector, start using it. See how human your content reads. Because of this, Google's looking for people whenever they're ranking content. It's got to sound human-like. That's really critical. 
So when Google defines experience, which they do at length in the search quality rater guidelines, they talk about this with an example. You have to have a wealth of personal experience. This is the content that will be considered trustworthy. And then they give an example. What would you trust? A product review from somebody who has personally used the product or a review from somebody who has not? And again, like that goes back to the robots. (laughs) They aren't going to be able to write a product review and tell us how it tasted, felt, smelled, all the things. So it's interesting that Google harped on that. So if we look at what they consider low quality pages, it's pages lacking in EAT. You you have to have a high level of EAT for your content to rank. So that means Google says, become the authority trustworthy source on that topic. And they're also talking about topical relevance. So for example, examples of low quality EAT is if you're talking about taxes on a cooking website. So that goes back to something that's been true since the beginning of Google, which is topical authority. You got to answer all the questions, talk about all the topics under the sun on your topic. Don't get distracted, right? Stick to your topic. That's what builds trustworthy sites. So it's interesting because Google also talks about social media and forums whenever they define high quality content that's going to rank. And whenever they talk about social media and forums, they say that these are defined as high quality when it involves people sharing experience. So this is why, like, you'll see me on LinkedIn, Twitter, now X, talking about more personal experience because this actually plays into your EAT signals. It's really interesting. Google's looking at EAT on all angles, not just your website. So when Google defines the highest EAT, which is the content that's going to rise to the very top, get those attributions when Google figures out their crap and attributes But when all this happens and the sea kind of levels and the tsunami gets under control and Google starts to rank the human-like content, what's going to rise to the top? This is. Google says uniquely authoritative go-to sources with a wealth of experience. So like now is the time I'll tell you to double down on what you know how to do really well, build a site around that, rank that site. Because when SGE is finalized and everything rolls out, We're going to see these niche sites attributed in those SGE results. They're going to be linked to, and the traffic opportunities are going to be pretty incredible. And I'll show you some screenshots of people that are actually. Uh, Because I was just Googling, I was speaking to Dennis Yu about this as well, like in terms of the knowledge panel, the knowledge graph, right? If you type in, for example, your name, it shows up probably because you have a lot of content out there, right? I think that's the. That's yes. what it does. And I think maybe this got even more prominent after he added this uh, extra E, like the experience. And that's like, you need to publish in a lot of places. You need to like publish on your site. You need to publish on social media and stuff like that. So yeah, I think this is, this is important. And that, that is just yes. shows building the personal brand more, I think. Exactly. Yes, that's so critical. And I've been talking to companies where it's like a big enterprise solution or Um, A company that's more of a brand, well, how do we put that person forward? Because experience is all about a human, an actual human. And about you, it says writer, like in the knowledge. Mm. (laughs) So it's pretty, pretty (laughs) accurate, I would say, you know. (laughs) I love it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. This is where Google's going. Great. Yeah. So ranking, it's not going away. And that's been the worry, right? Like we've actually had people ask us, does SEO still matter? Yes, it does. But if you're not doing it with E in mind, you're probably going to be in that ocean that just gets lost completely. So we have to think about this whenever we're creating content for our sites. Do I have a niche site? Is it set up to be like that more personal brand focus? Because that's really going to win. So here's a real life example of that. Um, These are people that are actually using AI to create their content And they're getting found in Google search and the SGE. So their keyword is which Hawaiian island to visit in 2023. And the SGE experience has expanded now to be, I think it's nine blocks on that carousel on the top right. So you can actually scroll through and get to them on the second scroll somewhere around there. And that's changing all the time. So it's like, you got to be on top of where you're at and make sure your content's good and reflects experience. So they're, they have the first blue link as well, which Hawaii Island to visit for this page. And then they're appearing in Google's SGE. So what they did 
to increase their rankings in this particular year was they actually used AI and they used the right AI, right? Like they're not creating duplicate content. And that's what you run into with tools like ChatGPT that are not built for long form. So with this particular AI writer, they're able to get more rankings, double their output and have an increase in traffic. And it's like a hands-off process because AI is doing the majority of the work. So here's another example of somebody that built up a great domain, (laughs) copywriting.org. Troy Erickson owns that. He got the domain with like no content on it at all. And then he just started adding content like a crazy man, but he didn't touch it. So it was a completely hands-off experience. I mean, these are the kinds of business I want to run where he didn't hire a single human writer, didn't have to do it himself. He just handed it all to one person, his SEO person. And he's like, hey, run the keywords through here, publish the content. And so in one month, they added 200,000 words to their site. And that was 70 pieces of content. And their domain growth shot up. Usually that takes six months to achieve that kind of growth. And that's what, you know, you saw, Naveed, with our website growth. Uh Like we're achieving this growth in a tiny period of time. Growth that usually takes years because we're able to do so much Does Google index this? Uh, like so quickly though, like, uh, because that's also a problem sometimes when you're adding content. I mean, I've seen this before, but maybe there's yeah. certain ways to get to uh, show signals to Google too. Because if you publish like 200 words really quickly, like, you know, how, how fast does this get indexed typically? And what have yeah. you seen? Yeah. So for this particular case study, it took him one and a half months to get that much content indexed. And I'll say like it was a good domain and all of the keywords, the topics were super topically relevant. And then they did their technical stuff, you know, so this was an expert SEO doing this. He knew what to do. So like you need to submit your sitemaps. You need to make sure that the content is properly linked together. You got internal links, external links on point. So it's really important. You're not just like driving this thing with somebody that doesn't know how to drive. (laughs) I that mean, if you're, I don't know, I'm pr- you probably, if you're blogging, you typically use, uh, you know, a lot of people use WordPress, right? So you can use a yes. tool like ra- Rank Math, which I've used. It's really good. And you get like the sitemaps and, you know, it's yes. kind of helping. It even has some built-in AI for this. It's had it for a long time, actually. But you can, you can utilize this to get some help with, you know, certain, you know, title, meta descriptions and things like that. And yeah, it has some AI features. <laughs> They weren't like so prominent before, but now everyone's talking about AI. So now you can point it out more. Like Rank Math has had this for years, I think. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And Content yeah. of Scale will directly talk to Rank Math okay. and it'll plug the meta. It writes a unique meta for each post by itself, all like automated, and it'll plug that into Rank Math. Does it integrate? Like is, it oh, does. Really? Oh, that's yes. amazing. That's, that's a good point you brought up. Yeah, because that's what, like all uh, the time. Do you time have other is... integration? Is it only like with WordPress uh, type of blogging and sites? Yeah, it's WordPress and Shopify right now. And um, got some integrations on the way in the next few months. Go High Level is one. Um, Webflow is another. So they're I, definitely I trying to... I moved my site to Ghost, but I'm moving back to WordPress for the blogging features. I wasn't blogging oh, for good. a while, but I, I just... Uh, I <laughs> like I, I love Ghost for the interface. Like, it's so mm-hmm. beautiful and so easy to write, like with the markdown and stuff. But WordPress has some more features in terms of like the blogging and ranking and, you know, putting... You know, making things a little bit more custom. So I think I, I'll, I'll yes. go back there. So. Yeah, very true. Well, I think if your goal is like traffic to your website, WordPress is going to be the fallback because it's just so robust for that. Yeah, for sure. All right, great. Yeah, good stuff. And then if you think about like the opportunity here to resell, I'll tell you, that's like incredible. So <laughs> here's an SEO founder that's, I don't know if any of you here sell content as a service or you freelance. Um, But I've seen agency owners, I've seen freelancers, I've seen writers adapt to using content at scale because, again, like we have the solution that's so good. It's mimicking a human writer. It's unique, integrates and does all the steps that would take hours. Like my process went from eight hours to seven. So if we have a solution that's that good, we can actually resell a service, put an hour of work on top of it, and that client gets great stuff. So that's what Chris at Direction.com is doing. He's the founder of that. It's an amazing SEO agency. And they're getting a lot of great results for clients. And what they call human-powered AI is like the heart of what they're doing. 
And they're using continent scale to do all of this content. So it's interesting to think about the opportunity with reselling this as a service. That's something that you could do to add so much to your bottom line. And that's a whole nother hour (laughs) because I've seen so many people make bank. But just a hot tip there. We have some case studies at continentscale.ai forward slash blog, if you go there, that talk about how people were able to do that. And some of them hit a 70% profit margin. So crazy stuff. But if you think about how to win with AI, helping you create content, and then here's AI in search, generating the results. Goodness gracious. You want to think about your personal experience kind of being the magical ingredient that gets you to stand out head and shoulders above the rest because no one is you, right? Like Dr. Seuss said it best, you are the only you, it's true. So if you bank on you as the ingredient that makes you set apart and a reason for somebody to move forward, your content will always be on point. So when it comes down to, okay, how are we gonna take a site? How are we gonna rank for, you know, what you saw at Consonant Scale, right? Half a million plus uniques per month. How do we achieve that? It's going to come down to these two things. (laughs) Nothing new here. It's content that you're going to create around your area of expertise at scale. It takes quantity and quality. And then you're going to try to get links. Not try to. You need to get links. And that could be as simple as, you know, writing for a guest blog publication. That's where you start and you just get cited on, even if it's one column where you're guest blogging. That positions you as an expert and gets you cited, building up that E for experience. So How do you Google get started Landers, with that. Like if you're hmm. if you're new, let's say you don't have yeah. the relationships and stuff like that. How would you do that? Maybe taking like when you got started, or maybe an example you've seen someone starting a site and they don't have any links, right? They don't have a hmm. good domain authority yeah. or anything, so they're not gonna rank for any competitive content. So how would they get started with like guest posting or getting featured and things like that? What would would be kind of your approach? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, so when it comes to what I would do, I definitely have an investment mindset. So going back to how to think here, that's critical. A lot of people put out content and they expect what social media sadly has created, which is instant gratification. But What you want to do instead is basically go against that whole culture because that does not produce results. What produces results is really like landlocking yourself, not yourself. You can hire somebody to do this for you, but like landlocking yourself into the idea of I need to commit to content for a year before I'm going to see any results. But that's hard, hard for us to think because of the monster of yeah. social media. I mean, media that's why content. I see a lot of, I mean, there's of course the blog, blogging was, I guess, the early form of creators, right? It was like long yes. time, way, way yep. back, the blogger started. Now, right. when you're thinking about the creator, they're typically not a blogger or they're not putting any content on their no. own site. You can find a creator with millions of YouTube subscribers or millions on Instagram, and you barely find their website. No website. I mean, that's, yeah. that's ridiculous, right? You find them on, it they is. don't even see a website. Maybe they're, Maybe their their excuse would be like dot com is not available or whatever, but you should have a website at a minimum. But if you're publishing so much content, what's your excuse not to put anything on your site? They're already publishing. Like I've seen like great Instagram or YouTube channel and they don't have anything on their site with this content or, you know, in repurposed. I mean, if, especially if you create video content, you can use like, I mean, Descript or something like that. And then you can bring it into make it better with a tool like, let's say, content at scale, you know, to kind of fill this out or make it more structured, whatever you want to do. There's so many ways and I don't see this. Uh, that, that's maybe why I wanted to bring you on here because as a creator, we don't, some, sometimes they don't do this for some reason. Yeah, a yeah, 100%. Well, going back to my story of exiting for over seven figures in 2021, you know, if I had banked on Instagram, Facebook, you name it, all the platforms out there, If I had banked on that as my source of traffic, I would not have had that exit because what built me up for that exit was I had this domain that was getting six figures a month in traffic and revenue. So all that was organic. And that was like search, you know, I mean, I mean, I I love Google traffic and I mean, YouTube is also search. So I I do like YouTube as well. That's why I'm going to go publish a lot more on YouTube, but for sure, like in Google, like that's, I mean, that. If you have traffic to it, you don't own YouTube, right? It can go away, it can happen. But 
but like yeah. your site, you you at least you own own the, what what's on your site, and yeah, the exactly. traffic can change, the algorithm can change, but typically, if you have a valuable site, it's gonna continue in some shape or form if you're just consistent to it. So yes, yeah. yes, and you own the experience of it too, right? So when people are on YouTube, Instagram, they're swiping, they're mm -hmm. gonna see somebody else's content and bounce. Yeah. When they're on your site, you control every part of that experience, and that's yeah. what brings in that like massive ROI versus, you know, you brought up a really good point. There's so many YouTubers that don't have a website. Like if we take Mr. Beast, for example, but, and so I think that creates this picture of, oh, I can just do that. But the truth is that's yeah. less than 1% of YouTubers. But he's a really smart business, business guy. So I think like to model he him. He has a website. Yeah, I mean, I has a but but it's a it's a Tons. bad example to model him from his yeah. YouTube success. Like it's like exactly. one in a, I don't know, it's like the only one basically is who's yeah. doing this. And I think it's a bad example. Entertainment used to, YouTubers are typically very difficult to model. Like if you're gonna have education, not gonna have as much views, but it's gonna be very targeted views for whatever you want to you know sell or offer to to your audience. So yeah. Yes. It's like, do you want to build a business here or do you want to just create content that gets some vanity metrics? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about creating a business. So that's the difference. You got to think like that. But that investment mindset. So if I was to, let's say, get a brand new website, brand new service offering, maybe sell courses, do something like that. If I was to do that right now today, I would be like, OK, we're going to get a content strategy together. We're going to buy a great domain. We're going to build a beautiful website and then we're going to do at least 100 blocks. Well, I'll tell you, like, I'm not going to make a lot of ROI from that unless, like, I go text people and say, hey, I'm offering this, which I would do. I would be that scrappy. But on the other hand, I would be investing my time into building that content because I know the value of what that can bring. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, the, that's that's so important. It's just uh, yes. like, And also, when you launch a site, I think it's great. Now with AI, you can actually scale the content. So you can actually have a lot of exactly. content when you go live. Which was typically not as easy. It was not as easy, as, especially when I launched my site. You know, I don't know, ten years ago, I haven't been as consistent as I probably should on my personal site. But, but either way, it, I have had some great affiliate post ranking, making great money from it. But I could have like done a lot more if I had like the AI tools to my <laughs> to my disposal, right? And just like scaling this from the beginning and putting a lot of content that could get indexed, like the example Yulia showed here. I think that that was really cool. Yes. Yeah, great stuff. And, you know, right. somebody else that speaks our language is Joe Polizzi. He founded Content Marketing Institute. Oh, yeah. He just sold the till. He just sold his third business. And he teaches, like, it is his it is his entire strategy in life, his entire mission to teach creators to be business owners. Because we get so lost in that shiny, glossy Instagram life. That is not reality. That's not what pays the bills. That is often a distraction. And the people that are making bank there, it took them way longer than you think. And it took them, you know, I've studied how they make money and it's it's an empire that can fall very quickly. And that's not the kind of one I want to run. <laughs> I want something mm. I can exit for a lot of money one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I'm no, going to put I, this I, much time I, into I, I interviewed him back in the day, actually. Yo, yo is great. Oh, it's amazing. like very, very good mind. <laughs> He's like on the day when he had the, the, you know, the Content Marketing Institute and Epic Content Marketing book and all this. But yeah, he's, he's more so focused good. on creator economy now, which is great, actually. Yes. I really I like that. I love that he's doing that. Yeah. 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 Cool. So here's where we can land when it comes to the question of, is Google going to rank AI content? You know, so Google said on their blog this February, this is kind of where they landed after doing a lot of 180s on what they were saying. Nope, don't, we're not going to rank it. Okay, yes, we are. This is where they're landing, that they're going to reward high quality content however it is produced, which means we don't really care if you're using AI, just make sure it's high quality. So if we know that, then we know we can use AI to scale our content, which is pretty freaking incredible. And I've done a lot of case studies since coming into Content Scale, working on the inside of this. This was by far one of the craziest ones. I'll tell you, there was a marketing agency based in California. That's me on a Zoom with them. And I showed them our process. We call it AIO, the process of optimizing AI content. So you take a writer and you train them to use a tool like Content Scale. And then you train them how to optimize that content. And the framework you can use is craft. That's what a lot of writers are using to get, jump into this tool and make that content. 
exactly what Google wants to see. They're cutting the fluff, reviewing it, adding images, trust building, fact checking. Right. So if you follow the steps, you're going to get great content and you're doing it at hours and hours and hours less time and dollars and dollars and dollars less cost because you're cutting out that expensive baseline of writing from scratch. So this is what they did. They were able to save 25x the cost. And what they were paying that $1,800 a month got them access to one writer through a content agency that wasn't available on the weekends. Often the quality wasn't that good. So the switch that they made got them a better solution. And it's just unbelievable that they saved 25x on the cost they were paying with content. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Yes. Yeah. Like what? You can do that. So this is what you want to think about if you're using AI. Yes, absolutely use it. Like it's not taboo, right? Get that out of your mind. If you're thinking that that is no longer true, even though last April Google said, we're going to penalize AI content. Nope. That's not where they land now. They've changed their tune. And there's, you know, millions of AI optimized pieces that are ranking in Google. We're seeing it at constant scale. This tool is behind 50 million words per month that users are producing. So it's pretty crazy. So if you think about the AIO approach where you're blending in the best of both, you're getting AI to write at the baseline and then the human is optimizing and the human's going through this process you're getting good content every time. And that's what Google said they cared about, right? It's high quality content. So this term that we came up with, AIO, we built a model to see just how much people were saving in cost and time. So I went and interviewed 100 of our so-called AIO adapters, people that were like, yep, I'm doing this. I'm going to take the AI and have a writer optimize it. And we're going to go that route. So these were like entire consultancies freelancers, agencies that were like, they annihilated the typical human writing model. And they were like, yep, we're doing this. We're going to get an AIO writer. So they went in a whole new direction. And what they saw was pretty incredible. So the baseline cost savings was 60%. Some saw as high as 80. The baseline time savings was 70%, went up as high as 300% time saved on content. And then if they were reselling this as a service, their profit margin went up by 40%. That is significant. It's not like two or three percent here. <laughs> yeah. This is a reason to adapt whenever you see the opportunity and the potential. So the importance of optimizing content is because of this. In the end, people buy from people. People don't buy from robots. So if our consumer is people and it's not AI, then we need to make sure that our AI is gated by. Does this sound human-like? That's really important. So a few final things on displaying ease, like how do I actually do this? These are some tangible steps. So first of all, you want to like throw out all inhibitions stopping you from being the expert. Like it is time to ditch imposter syndrome, right? It's time to stand up and say, I'm that expert. I'm going to own it. I'm going to talk about this all the time in my video content, my written content, social media. I'm the expert on this topic. So you can have incredible expertise in your head in your history, but if you're not talking about it, if you're not publishing content on it, you'll lose out on EAT. So this is really how to win with this. And then omni-channel, you want to think about doing this on social media, not just your website, and then do not rabbit hole. So stay very true to the topics that you want to be known for. You know, it's so easy to talk about a million things because we are human, we have a lot of interest, but if you want to be known for something, if you want EAT for something, what would that one thing be? Like Naveed, it could be virtual summits, right? that you are the master of that. So that's like the topic you continue to talk about. And there's thousands of angles and thousands of keywords you could write about. Just, just in, uh, something on this. I find it interesting to kind of branch out. Like Summit is very specific. So I always struggle mm -hmm. because it's not so much traffic on it. So it's kind of, it's kind of you can branch out to write about related things. I don't talk as much about it. I try to do my, I just do my own summits on topics I'm interested in or for the audience in the creator economy. Like we are doing an AI summit for creators, like digital writing, online course summits. We have done list building before, things like that. But then, yeah, people see that I'm doing, like I'm basically doing what I'm, what I'm teaching or what I've, you know, what I've done great. for a long time. And then they will like be yeah. interested in working with me or I'm not I'm not doing it as much anymore as before. I'm just focusing on my own my own content, my own summits and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. great point. So you're 
you know, by doing the thing, it's like if I was only talking about writing, yeah. but I wasn't actually writing all my content, <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. be a problem. So you're running the summits. You're continuing to build all that expertise. Yeah, but if you talk about content, for example, I think just writing about something, there's not just as many. Key- I mean, there's obviously you can write about related keywords, for example, virtual events. There's a bunch of tools now that do it, like that are really successful. You can kind of see what they are writing. I would kind of model what other big companies are doing in this space. If I wanted to kind of capture this traffic, we probably don't have exactly the same audience. They are more like corporate, but they are they are producing a lot of content. But then you can go after kind of the you know, online business type audience, marketing audiences, you can write about keywords like this. So you're kind of building up this cluster of content. So yeah, that's, that's, how, that's what, how I would do it if I would like build out a site about something like this. Yeah. yeah. And keyword research, digging into the data is so important, right? Like SEMrush, if you type in, mm-hmm. let's say virtual summit and you go to the, it's the magic keyword research tool and you go to the questions tab, like you will probably get 1200 a thousand yeah. two hundred questions on you can that. Just answer, yeah, exactly. Keywords. Yeah, just, just answer, answer all a lot of questions. But I, <laughs> yeah. I usually, what 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 have you found? You write the ultimate guide on a topic, like for example, how to host a virtual mm-hmm. summit or how to do content marketing, whatever it is. Do you write the the ultimate guide on it, or do you try to like do just kind of see what questions and like answer a specific question? What have you found working the best, especially maybe for a newer site that doesn't have you know a lot of traction yet? Yes. Well, that, you know, what I'm thinking is we could kind of show instead of tell. Let me see if I'm at the end of this. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we are. Okay. We're at the end. So the final tip (laughs) is the final tip. Your content's going to feel like driving a car versus broken down wagon. (laughs) But to answer your question, yeah. So I would think about topical clusters and I want to switch over into, here we go. We're at the end of this. Um, I want to switch over into showing you guys content scale and real quick. Um, mm-hmm. this, these are some screenshots, but we'll go into the actual product. So you'll get to see it. But I do want to mention, you know, we have an exclusive offer just for Naveed. There will be a link for this where you can get 20% additional free credit. So be sure to use this link if you're going to sign up. <laughs> just yeah, want to put that out there. There's a lot of, um, you know, AI tools, which we mentioned, but I, I do think that, uh, you know, I have seen, you know, I've seen other people also talk about it. It's not only what I've seen, like Yulia, yeah. I mean, she's she's part of the, the company, obviously. So she's going to talk very well. Mm-hmm. But I've seen like people using it in real in real practice. And I'm always a little bit like, you know, careful because I really want this human touch. And I've seen a lot of AI content. Wow. It's not always that great. But content at scale is built with a specific purpose in mind, which is kind of really, really high quality content. And yeah, you can add your personal stories and stuff like that to it. So for me, I have, uh, I'm endorsing it. I've kind of played around a little bit. I need to use it a lot more, but uh, it's definitely great to scale content. I think I can create a lot more. I mean, I have a lot of video content, but if I just would like outline affiliate blog posts and stuff like that, I can also do it a lot faster and get them up and running. Yeah. So let me walk you through just a couple things here. So the way this works is it's a if you think about AI, usually you need to prompt it a bunch of times. You got to do a lot of setup. So the way Content of Scale is built is it's basically a prompt free tool and you're just feeding it input like you would a real writer. So whenever you set up a project, you can see we got tons of content going on in here. It is so, so interesting you say this. I spoke to the copywriter, John Benson. I don't know if you know him. He's really, okay. he's, quite, he's quite famous in the yes. direct response. But he has a tool specifically for long form sales letters, uh, way, way different than wow. content at scale. It's not for the same purpose. It's called Benson, uh, Benson AI. And, and basically, uh, he's talking about pr- promptless AI. He's even, co- he's even trademarking wow. this term because it's, uh, it's like uh, it's saying it's moving in this direction because P- he believes like people don't need to be prompt engineers and things like that. Yeah. It's, just an in- it's just a different take to what a lot of other people are saying. It's interesting that you guys don't even require prompts, right, in the, in the software. Yes. Which is cool. And it makes, maybe it makes it easier, actually, for people who don't know too much about it. It does. Yeah. Because we have so many expert marketers that are the barrier to entry is the prompt engineering, but they yeah. have like incredible, you know, buy in. They need content, but they just like, there's no time to learn how to be a prompt engineer here. <laughs> we got to yeah. get stuff done. All right. So that's where the functionality of the tool really it becomes important. So the input looks like this you feed it either a keyword, 
an existing URL, a YouTube video, a podcast episode, a raw. Should we do doc. a quick example, like what it uh, like for for a blog post? Maybe I don't know what. Yeah, the... yeah. Let's do it. What do you want to turn into a full article? Should we do? Yeah, may let's maybe. Let's see. I'm... Let's pick something that that's just I don't know from my site what I'm currently maybe something about um, email marketing or something like that. Let's say about okay. This. I was yeah, I was publishing it. some at least I was publishing some old videos from my list building school summit on YouTube. So at the time we are recording this, and yeah, maybe I'll turn it into like a guide or something like that. Nice. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna switch to this account. I got some credits here, and we're gonna create a project for your site. That's where we're gonna start. So what is your site URL? My site URL is navid.me. Navid.me. Okay. Short. Yeah. I'm looking at it. I don't think you'll see the screen. I'm checking it out. Oh, yeah, okay. it's, it's just I need to. I'm, I'm changing. Actually, it was different before. I had it when I had it on WordPress. Now it's on Ghost, but I'm moving it back to the old one. So it's just. Nice. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah, the design is. I see yeah, why you like it. It's just simple now. It was way better before. I had it cut. This is like a template, but it, it's it's good. I I love how Ghost loads really fast. You don't need to optimize too much. It's just like quick. But I I think WordPress, as we talked about, is more control for SEO and ranking content. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So building like that mass income. Uh, yeah. Well, it is an income after it's a traffic stream. Building that up. Yeah, no, which I had I'm a lot of traffic before. Acronym. I just kind of neglected the site a little bit. But mm. yeah, that happens. <laughs> well, this will get you right back on track. Yeah, yeah no, I have, I have so many ideas for the video content, like how, how I can use AI tools. Like, I mean, I'm already using like Descript for a lot, but now I'm probably going to start using this as well with maybe hire a VA or something like that to go in and, yeah. and do it and helping me out with some of my content. That's smart. So over here on the custom tone of voice, you can actually, you can type in custom and then you can train it on your specific tone or you can pick out um, preset tones. Not or Ryan Dean or something like that. It, this, yeah, let's do uh, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it because it's so simple. I, I like that. I mean, that's typically yes. how I write. I mean, I don't see it's a Brian Dean voice. It's just like really simple. I think that's the way I write short sentences and I like to, you know, just keep the keep it simple. That's, and typically AI writers don't do this. ChatGPT is like, you know, way too confused sometimes. And <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, this is cool. You have like some marketers, some pro you have like Neil Patel, <laughs> Brian Dean, <laughs> different people. It's nice. Yes. Yes. And you don't see that in a lot of tools. Like what we've no. tried to do is blend the training plus the technology. So it's like, oh, I can trust this tool because it's got some of the best content creators in the world. The tool is actually trained on how to do that. So that's something that I think is really unique to this tool. So what I'm going to do, I grabbed a YouTube video from your channel, a really good one, actually. It's an hour, 38 minutes. You want to go like, I would say that's our top. So 38, that's a good length. Anything like an hour can be too long because then you kind of get a content piece that trails a little bit. Um, yeah. So we can feed I mean, it I would remove some of the, I mean, I, ha I had one on the 10 best list building strategies, but I think it was like over over an hour, like with the, uh, and uh, was recently I published it, but yeah. Yeah. I like this one. Neil Patel's top email marketing Oh yeah, that, that one is good also. That one yes, good. it's very good. So we're going to pick the keyword for it. I'm going to say how to grow your subscriber list fast and content scale comes with a keyword research tool. So we can explore that while this is writing. But this is all I would do. So whenever you think like promptless tool, I'll tell you, whenever you feed this tool less, it actually does better because it's trained with so much depth on how to write good content. So this is all. That's all I would add in. If you wanted to say something very specific, you could add it here. Like, for example, don't mention Neil Patel, which is hard because this is a YouTube video with Neil Patel's. But you could say something specific there. But that's all I would do to guide it and then <clears throat> so this, at this, this point can, it be... can read the link basically the tool yes so that's, oh, that's cool. so you'll see like it'll be a whole in-depth article with all your formatting and then you can go over here to integrations and let's say your site was on wordpress you could download the wordpress plugin upload it to your site and then this will start talking to your website and you can publish mm. straight from here and it'll Very fill nice. out the rank math meta it'll do all that automated that's amazing. 
<laughs> but if you go to the keyword research tab, so this is an API that goes to uh, a tool called Keyword Finder, which is created by Mangle. So it's a really good. I know. SEO I know this tool. tool. This is tool yeah. is pretty oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's a yeah. great tool. Yeah. So if you were going to create new content, what are some keywords that you would want to go after for this site? Uh, for this, I mean, I'm not sure if I because this was like a YouTube, but I, I, mean, I will, I'm maybe I would do like an ultimate, like email marketing tips, for example, could be one that could be like a smaller one than just going for email marketing or email marketing strategy. Um, it could be, I had some other ones like list building, list building strategy, list building tips, but I, I, I would say this one, maybe like email marketing, something email marketing tips or something. Probably what I would do if I would like really now we just you showing an example, I might put other experts in the post and make like more experts like sharing their tips. Uh, that would be probably more share shareability. I've done this before. Not like not yeah. a typical roundup post. That's kind of I would do more value. So it's like still like a guide, but I have like quotes from a lot of experts in it. And that's that's probably what I would do if I would do it really, really, you know, really well. But like, yeah, you uh, could take out a lot of tips what Neil is saying and, and you know, that, that can be an example for here. But it's cool that you can just take like a video and doing it this way and just reading it yeah, is, is way faster than, I mean, and now ChatGPT Ch Ch oh, yeah. can read links like from, you know, via the integration with Bing yes. and stuff like that. But I think this is just more straightforward actually to use it for this specific purpose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And whenever we plugged in that this is their seed keyword, this data gives us all kinds of ideas on what we can actually go after. So like one thing that I do is I actually sort by lowest ranking difficulty. And then that gets you all the way down starting at zero. So like <laughs> yeah. there's 120 searches for Clavio, Clavio affiliates. And I wonder what the intent of that keyword is. Because if we, if you were an affiliate of this tool and you targeted that keyword with 120 searches, uh, is it, that the email marketing tool, right? For yes, cl Clavio oh, for e for e-commerce, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that is something I've done before. I've like done, for example, for ClickFunnels. I used to I, I removed some of these posts. I didn't want to be because there was a lot of spam regarding ClickFunnels and stuff before. So I removed yeah. some posts and they because <laughs> I got links from like bad sites. I just removed. oh no. But uh, yeah, the, the like ClickFunnels affiliate and there's like different. You if you target keywords like that, you can actually rank for it and you can add your. You can have a yes. good post, like how to become a ClickFunnels affiliate, how to, you know, be yes. a great Slavia affiliate. I mean, that that's less competition typically on oh. these type of keywords. Yeah. yeah. You'd rank in no time at all with a zero competition. You'd probably rank in a week. <laughs> yeah, most likely. <laughs> and that's yeah, where, like, you know, the example of Troy Erickson, like how did he get 200,000 words to rank? Well, they were very strategic around low competition keywords. And he had yeah, a great domain. You, you write for a lot of them, like, because with AI, you can write, like, I mean, imagine, you, like, it's, it's yes. a scale, right? You can, like, take, yeah, 100 visitors a month sounds like nothing. And you probably, you're not getting hundreds a month. You're getting, like, a portion of this traffic if you rank number one, right? So it's, like, less, but, <laughs> so you don't get too much traffic. Yeah. From it. But if you have a few hundred blog posts like this on your site, well, yeah. you're getting a lot of traffic, so... Exactly. Yeah. And see how simple it is from here. We can click create content and then the AI is writing. Like we no longer have to send this to a writer. Wow. It's crazy. Let me see how this, this is great. So this is the integration with the uh, key, uh, this keyword tool, right? To see all these stats. Yeah. So this is Mangles. So you're, that's a okay. 30, 40, up to 80 bucks a month just for that tool. So you don't even have to pay for that because this is all oh, pro this is level. included in the plan. Oh, included. this is really cool. It's like, yeah. My <laughs> It's like my ConvertKit subscription comes with Spark Loop. It's great, actually. So yes, yeah, it's the all in one. Yeah. yeah, awesome. I mean, there's so many. I might, I might have to go create content now for my sites. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Email yeah. marketing yeah. I mean, is, is is good. You know, maybe something yeah, with email so. marketing and AI. I'm not sure if that's coming more, but uh, ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure something I I talk more. I mean. For my summit was a few years ago, but the content is still relevant because I am I like to yeah. do evergreen content and the strategies yeah. still apply. Just because you're using AIs, yeah, you can use technology is always going to evolve and change. I'm sure mm -hmm. in a few years, content at scale is way different and it's more advanced. So, but still, the strategies we are talking about here still going to apply to a lot of things you are doing, and that's that's typically the content I like to consume and the content I like to create for for my audience. 
Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, it's see. still in the queue. It's hoping it'd be done by now. We must have a loaded queue today. What I could do is while we're waiting for this to write, um, yep. I could go ahead and show you what content looks like when it's done. And then we can go yeah, back. Yeah, and show, show me what it's, show, show yeah. me some examples. Yeah, let's do it. So here's one. Let's see. This was written seven days ago, seven-ish days. So all of my content for Content Hacker, we do it from here now. Like we don't, we don't do Word docs. We don't do WordPress posts because this directly talks to our WordPress site. So it's so simple. So whenever we have a keyword, like we're doing it through here or we're even doing the keyword research through here. And then this is our source of the ideas plus all of the content. So here's what it looks like whenever it comes out of AI. So we've picked my style, which is a lot like Brian Dean, which is why you're seeing like very short paragraphs. That's a great style that gets people to read and scroll better. So you have a table of contents and all of this is straight HTML markup. So it's not like, you know, some weird numbers, it's actual terms. So this is SEO friendly right here at the table of contents, and that's all automated. Wow, great. That's done. Yeah, that's done in seconds whenever it writes the post. That's included. And you can turn that off if you don't want it in the project settings. But honestly, this is like, pretty <laughs> similar to looks a little bit similar to Surfer SEO, like when it comes yes. to like the scores and stuff like that. Is that like the semantic keywords? I mean, you can add different things and it will increase the score. What, what is the, what is this, what the optimization yeah. score? Is that yeah. something like that? Like to sprinkle in more? Yeah, yeah. It looks exactly, it exactly. looks pretty similar. This, this is actually something very useful. Yes. Yeah. So something that we're doing that goes a little bit beyond Surfer and Surfer is a great tool. I think they kind of started leading some path here with how you know, how you can actually edit your content and make it more SEO friendly. But something that we're doing is um, the team at Content Scale is amazing. There's some deep experts here. So we have an expert that knows all about SEO, things like salience, which is basically the order of words. So like mm -hmm. if you're talking about a keyword and you don't give that keyword ownership, Google doesn't look at that as an entity. And you want your keywords to appear as entities. So all of this is pretty advanced for your SEO and it'll tell you like, here's where, here's where it is. This is, and then it'll circle it in green if it's good to go. And the AI will try to do as much as it can for you. But then there's still some, you know, an orange that we need to add in a few more times. So we can click on it to see where it is in the content. And then we can add it a few more times. So here we go. It's down so here. So this is like in the editing process, usually. Like when you, like you're yes. getting a post, like, well, and, and the post usually generates like 3,000 words. So you can set the amount of words you want for a post. Correct. Or... You can. And what Goes is the typical to... word count? It depends on what is on the first page of Google. Do you try to do around the same length or a little bit longer? Or what's your approach to this? Yeah. So this tool will actually... It goes and gets word counts from the top of Google, and it'll tell uh -huh. you that right here. So it's okay. doing the semantic analysis real time. And if you go to the research tab, you'll see ranking content. Like it's telling you exactly where it's pulling the top ranking pieces mm. from, which is going into this piece Great. of content. But this piece Does of content hurt is original. Does it have your content longer than the first? Uh, can it yeah, hurt good if question. it's longer? Or, or, uh, can. Yeah. So I would say at this length, it's not too bad. Like we're still, if it was like 3,200, 3,500, I would be worried. But if it's okay. longer by like a thousand words max, that's okay. Longer it, content and so is usually... So if it's usually, too long, it's not good actually. It can actually hurt the content if it's too long. It's yeah, so that's where you would want to read it and scroll through it or have your, you know, if you have somebody that's a writer and SEO doing this, have them read through and scroll. And anything that's fluff, you want to just cut. Like if, oh, it said this like twice, then I'm just going to mm. cut that out entirely. And that's where you'll start to bring that word count down. But if it's because not it's fluff, like search intent, it's like this is the most important, like search intent. I think if you're, you can write that, yes. like it was something about, I've seen this before, like how to make money blogging. If you're not writing, and it's very funny because this blog, this is like a pretty competitive, but a lot of people had <laughs> a blog post like this, uh, you know, a lot of different blog, make money blogger type people. Had it. 
And then uh, if you write it, wrote it in a different way, you will rank. But if you write it like everyone else in the same format, you would rank. Like, or you, I mean, if you had the authority for it and stuff like that, you would maybe increase your rankings. Otherwise, you wouldn't. The Google is like, they want a specific type or they're like listing the ways to make money or whatever it was. So it's really yeah. funny. Yeah. 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 You want to think about the competition and something that this tool yeah. does that makes it easier is it's looking at what's in the top of Google for you. All right, so yeah. it's guiding everything against that, okay, which is just, really? you know, that was my life as a writer, scrolling the top of Google, <laughs> reading all the content. Don't have to anymore. This tool does it. Great. Awesome. No, I mean, this is great. Uh, I don't know if the other queue was was ready, but yes, otherwise we can see. do a different tutorial about this. But it, this was really, really valuable. I think people are getting a lot of insights how they can use AI to scale their content creation for, you know, for blog posts and stuff like that. And if you have videos now, you can see that you can use a tool like Content at Scale to do this. Uh, but it was kind of yeah. new. I thought, I thought you kind of, you needed to start from scratch. I didn't know you could actually use videos directly, but that was, that was kind of interesting that you yeah. can cool. just get all, and it would be, it would be cool if you could see what happens with this video. <laughs> I don't know. If I it's know good. it's, it's nearing, it's 30% written right now. So we might, we might be able to hang out for another uh, six minutes, do some conversation and we can actually yeah, see yeah, it, yeah. but I can show you also um, one of the recent pieces that I did on Content Hacker that yeah. I thought turned out really amazing. I was actually surprised how yeah, good this yeah. turned show, out. Show me, show me what this is like. Yeah. Probably. So cool. I fed it a YouTube video, and here's what it does with a YouTube video. It doesn't write a summary. It actually writes a full article breakdown on what that topic was. So this was okay. how to develop inner strength. It was about resilience by this thought leader, Jordan Peterson. And so what it did was it broke all of his topics down into like all of these amazing subheaders. And yeah, we still got to fix them. Like here's one that's, oops, AI did a little hiccup there. But if you read this opener, I mean, it's so good. So this is just from my video, this getting this. Just from one video. We haven't done anything. Very interesting. No I have so many videos. I mean, I have a lot of content I've done <laughs> from summits and stuff like that. I can just imagine what, what so much content, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a that's, gold mine for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. That's great. <laughs> and it's embedding the video, you know, right here above the H2. So it's doing all this by itself. And then the headers are just so good. It's even pulling out a quote that that person said, bolding it, highlighting it. And then it, anytime it's referencing something like this example, yeah. Elon Musk creating tunnels, it's going to go find that yeah. link for you. And you so know what's really cool well. with video content, which I, what I like about video content a lot, it's unique content. It's your content. You already yeah. have all the rights to it. You don't need to worry too much. It's actually, so basically what happens when you're adding a video, I guess the AI is mm -hmm. like reading this video, whatever, reading the transcript or whatever it is. And then it's pulling the information and it's like writing a compelling blog post based on that information that they, they, we fed to it. So that is actually unique content. And you can actually, maybe it's less editing involved because you already got everything there. So yeah. Yes. Well, I we like have that. one of your posts ready. <laughs> okay, let's check. <laughs> let's check this out. Yeah. Um, this... So it's still writing the YouTube piece, but it's looks like it's sixty percent done. So that should be done real soon. But it yeah. actually wrote the one on the Clavio affiliate keyword. <laughs> the Clavio. Look at this. Let's see what this looks like. What I'm shocked yeah. by is this thing over here. This is scoring ninety is scoring? out of the gate. Or uh, how is that? That is crazy. Like out of the gate. That's interesting. Huh? Yeah, that is. That's really mm -hmm. interesting. So it's pulling in a lot of and, and do, you see, do you see the human touch in this? Uh, do you see kind of the detector in this? Or that's a different tool you have in, in built in? You mentioned oh, yeah, the, detec the detector. The, that's a good yeah, question. Yeah, the AI so. detector. So you need to check that. You said so it's yes. like have this human touch so it doesn't read as, an, as a robot or an AI. Exactly. So you want to run things through a detector. And then, of course, shameless plug, one of the detectors is our own. So. Yeah. And these detectors are tricky. Like there's one very is well Is that included called... in the software, though? That is. Oh, that's included. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Everything you're looking at is included. So Great. there we go. Passes it as human. And then it's highlighting some sentences that are like, mm, this sounds a little robotic. But you see the majority is like pretty good, pretty spot on. But if we know like, okay, this one sounds a little robotic, then that's where the writer can go in and say, okay, I'm going to change a few words. And then bam, it sounds like a human wrote it. 
Great. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So this is, this and is then like something right else. away. So yeah. Crazy. Something else you can do is you can run a plagiarism scan. So this is an API call to CopyScape, which is a tool I used, goodness, every day for all my writers to make sure they weren't no plagiarizing. Play. And, and, <laughs> and this was a post, with, this, was, this was not the video. This was just a keyword we found when we, when we were checking email marketing, I think. So, yes. uh, yeah, so th this is cool. There's no plagiarism. There's human touch. You can tweak things. Maybe, maybe I would add my personal experience if I had yeah. one. I mean. I, I probably wouldn't write about this because I don't have too much experience with this tool, but like you can pick a similar keyword, like maybe you have a tool you have experience or something like that. Or if you have an affiliate site, that could be kind of interesting to just do things like that. And yeah. So for sure. And it's interesting. Nice. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Your AI is, even you get surprised. It's like, that means it's like evolving pretty quickly in the world of yeah, AI here. So it's listen, getting well, better. It started in January and what it was writing was not this good and the team like we have experts here right so they're on top of the seo trends they're on top of eat mm -hmm. and they're studying all this and then they're building the tool to follow what we actually need so this would actually pass as experience that's <laughs> specific story and, and, and i usually pull in like i i like to pull in stories in like when i write about a tool or something i like to pull in stories Smart. from real customers other than my own sometimes i mean yeah. i might write about ConvertKit or you know a tool i'm using it could be like i had ex let's say i'm writing some blog posts about content at scale but i would also look at other people using it and what they experience is and that that usually increases the value of the exactly. post so and yeah this i guess signals for google google as well that it's a valuable piece of content Yes. And something else I'm surprised about is it added in this little chart as well. That's, Does I knew. Add like FAQ, like, you know, like these, yes. it's, it's like in rank math and the different, you know, uh, I think some blocks. So in WordPress, you can add like an FAQ section as like schema. Uh, so yep, you get that's that right in here. The, and that's okay. got the schema markup in it. So it'll yeah, schema markup. It's so important yeah. to do that if oh, you're writing so blog important. posts. Don't miss this. Oh. Like have some questions and FAQ is like the same when you're writing a landing page or like a sales page or something. You typically have this. So in blog posts is even more important because you're ranking like this. This can show up in in Google. Yes, yeah. the people also ask the well, it's a related great question. Questions. Actually, it's good. This yeah. is good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so surprised. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting this to be honest. And even takeaways. I like this. I I, I usually make these kind of boxes sometimes on my site. It was really good. This is like wow. amazing. Wow, such I a know. good tool. I'm really impressed by this particular post myself. I'm, yeah, yeah, I see yeah. it all you the might, time. You might publish it. <laughs> no, no. I'm sitting here thinking if I was Naveed, I would probably publish this with very little edits. Yeah, I wouldn't do too much edits, probably. I, I mean, I would, I would check. So it's like, but I think yeah. it's pretty good. I mean, the table of content is really in depth, and yeah, it's, it's great, Ew. amazing. Uh, how's the other um, one doing? Yeah, let's go see. Let's see if it's done. I <laughs> but can't. Does it usually good. take? It's like the now it's ready, right? Yes, like, it's ready. So Proven it's like the pen. I think it was because it was a lot of was a lot from the video. It's quite long, like yeah. 30, 38 minutes. I mean, if you have a 38 minutes to 60 minutes of video, it's quite a lot of words spoken. So I guess. Oh my gosh. And I'm basically getting like a content piece from a video just like that. That's, that's wild. I'm, I'm just uh, stunned because I haven't seen. This is it doesn't great. look like I work here. I'm like, what is this magic? Yeah, yeah. You're Even you get surprised. I mean. I know. Well, you know what's crazy? It's like I spent 10 years writing this and I know the work that goes in, the hours and hours. This is a lot of work. And I know this as well. I would spend, you know, I would spend like hours. I'm not even a native English speaker, but I would spend yeah. a lot of time, uh, a lot of time doing doing this type of stuff for my posts. And I was would do, do it myself. Then I brought down a writer to help me a little bit with like stuff. But I always wrote the outlines and I, I told them exactly what I wanted. So it was clear. But with this, I can do it so much faster. Like, and this then, is unbelievable. Yeah, this is crazy. Like, oh my And you can God. also like create like guides for your audience. Let's say you have videos in a product or something like that. You just pull out all the information and you get this really quickly. It's not just a, this is not just a transcript. This is actually, no. a transcript is not as valuable. Transcript no. is just reading, but this is like headlines and like reads as a blog post. That's what, what is amazing about this. I know. And something you said earlier, you're like, you know, video as an input is a really good input because it's unique to you. And I'm telling you, 
you're onto something because as I scroll this, like the yeah. level of detail. This yeah, is from all my videos, the the, that's what I'm talking about. All the all this content, we we need to talk like of uh, of this. But I have some ideas around this stuff oh because my. I I I, oh I see a lot of smart people. Like Dennis Yu is one. Uh, he was on the summit, uh, like talking about his content production engine and his content factory, and he's using like actually I need to tell him to use content at scale. I think he's using like uh, Descript, which is great, but you're not getting like this level as a blog post. I think he would like. Sp uh, save time using content at yeah. scale actually because these script is just like transcribing the video you're not getting a blog post out of it which you, exactly. you can do some video editing there which is great if you want to edit the video but you're not getting all this level of detail as a blog post that's that's no. what is really cool it's creating like near perfect content like even this headline that i'm reading the opener the opening hook which is like mm -hmm. takes a lot of time to get right Ever feel yeah. like you're screaming into the void with your email marketing, crafting perfect emails, but they just tumble into the inboxes of a handful? You're not alone. Yeah. Right. But, but th this is this has been great. Let's let's do this. Like for for like we'll do another one where we go over exactly like from from step you know zero to actually writing a blog, but that will be in the bundle for for the yes. paid customers. If you if you want to upgrade to the AI for creators uh, summit bundle, you have like a you know a lot of different resources there as well. And uh, y yeah, check out content at scale. I now you saw how incredible this is. Actually, I was a little bit surprised it could do this. And even uh, Yulia was surprised here, which is interesting. This is not uh, scripted or anything like that. I'm just no. like blown away what it could do. And I haven't seen, I mean, there's a million AI tools out there, but I haven't seen too many tools that can do exactly this for this specific use case. So yeah, if you want the 20% in, uh, was it 20% in free credits, right? Yes, 20% yeah. free credits. We don't yeah. offer that anywhere so, else. That's amazing. So go to content at scale.ai slash Navid. You can check this out yes. there. Be sure to leave your biggest takeaways. This was a really long video <laughs> and I didn't expect it to go this long, but it's, it's so much value here. How you can do, how you can create content at scale yeah. and doing this, whether you have video or whether you start from scratch, right? This is like really incredible. Yeah. And if you want to have unique content, you have a lot of video as a content creator. This is great to like put some content on your site, get this up and running. Like it's in a minutes, no brainer. In minutes, Naveen. Any and YouTuber good, or right. creator should do this. So yeah, subscribe to the channel for more. And for uh, for the bundle audience, we we are going to do a specific screen share where we actually show even more in depth around this because it would take <laughs> probably another half an hour or something like that to do this. But Yuli, I would I would like to thank you for your time to share all this stuff. And yeah, it seems like the tool is uh, even surprising you. Believe it, I'm sitting here in shock that it came out in '90, and it was you know it's a fully original piece of content. Would have taken a writer. A writer that I would typically hire, that's a $900, I would say, assignment. If you're hiring the top content writer that knows like the John Morrow style, yeah. the art of creating a blog hook, all that's done in five minutes. Yep. And the cost of that was like $15. Yeah. I will link up some resources we talked about here below as well in the description. And yeah, we'll do we'll do a more in-depth uh, video as well on uh, kind of the process from step zero to actually publishing a blog post. Yes. And if you want more content like that, let me know in the comments. Uh, we might come on here as well. I think this will be really popular. <laughs> I have a feeling because it's, it's just a mind blowing what this can do. So thanks yeah. so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Ciao for now.